Hello, everyone. Welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Tucker remained in his Paris hotel room with his assistant, concerned about what was happening with Glissade. He couldn't receive any information regarding a takeover and was concerned when nobody returned his calls or emails about the company. He understood Audra was correct when she warned him there was a hostile takeover going on right beneath his nose. He attempted to adjust the timing of the board meeting, but was unsuccessful, which added to his concerns. Meanwhile, Audra sipped coffee in her own room, looking very satisfied with herself. She received a text informing her that Tucker was urgent for a meeting. Audra flashed back to Tucker, assuring her he was done with Ashley for good. Victor quickly texted her, asking her to let him know when the board voted. When Tucker arrived, Audra tried to persuade him to leave, telling him, I regret every minute I've ever wasted on you, and I won't waste any more. Tucker didn't wait to be let in before making himself at home and imploring her not to let anyone take over his cosmetics company. He stated that he would have let her run it any way she wanted, but he didn't want anyone else doing the same. Audra refused to hear it, even when Tucker offered her the company again. He claimed he didn't want to be embarrassed in the corporate world, but Audra didn't mind. Audra was still irritated that Tucker prioritized others above her, particularly Ashley and Davon. She couldn't simply forgive and forget. Tucker reminded out that he was in Paris with her, not Ashley, which should count for something. He claimed he was now putting her first. Audra claimed she simply didn't care anymore. Tucker was amazed at how vindictive and cruel she could be. Tucker and Audra continued their argument. She informed him that the sale had already been completed and he had lost. Tucker did not want to quit up just yet. Tucker was convinced Audra's investor was trying to get him. Jack Abbott, right? He inquired, implying he's still out for revenge. Audra declined to confirm or deny and informed him that the investor would not be attending the board meeting. She informed him that the contract required him to never tell Tucker who had stolen his company from beneath him. Tucker went, swearing to Audra that she would pay for betraying him. Tucker unwillingly went to his hotel and joined his video board meeting, which was led by Audra. Tucker became lightheaded and experienced chest problems before to the vote. Audra couldn't believe it when Tucker toppled down while trying to catch some air. While Tucker's assistant cared for him and sought for medical assistance, Audra raced in to investigate if Tucker was lying. Tucker appeared to be in agony, but Audra wasn't convinced. She even informed the doctor that Tucker was not telling the truth. Tucker urged Audra to leave while the doctor examined the patient. I don't want to take my last breath looking at you, he told me. The Abbots were still in Paris. Alan walked by to meet Tracy and was startled to see Jack there. He provided an update on Ashley's stay in the clinic. He thought Ashley was doing well given the circumstances. Tracy and Jack were relieved, but Alan continued to feel guilty. Alan stated that if it had not been for his brother, Martin, Ashley would never have experienced any of this. Jack and Tracy informed him that he was not responsible for Ashley's difficulties. Alan gave Tracy a more full summary of Ashley's treatment. Doctors would discuss her episode with Martin as well as Ashley's earlier experiences. Those experiences have led Ashley to where she is today, and she's going to have to process them. Alan explained, in that Ashley may have additional identities they are unaware of. Alan indicated that most changes occurred as a result of early childhood trauma. Jack and Tracy were shocked that Ashley's alters may have been present while they were growing up and they had never known. Alan explained that many people fail to detect changes in youngsters because they can lay latent for years until being awakened by adult stress. He stated that in order to treat Ashley, they needed to get to the bottom of the problem. 
Alan felt convinced Ashley's doctors would get to the bottom of the matter. Alan asked Tracy if she could stay in Paris and be Ashley's support system. Jack wanted to stay for as long as possible. When Jack left Tracy and Alan alone, Alan invited her to supper. Um arrived to Crimson Lights to meet with Chelsea, as she had requested. She was thrilled to inform him that Connor had made a breakthrough on his contamination concerns. He was even able to consume several of the items he had previously avoided. Sharon quickly interrupted them, delighted to learn that Connor had made progress. Adam was afraid to raise his hopes, but Chelsea was determined to be hopeful. Sharon encouraged Adam to send positive energy into the globe, assuring him it would help. Even Chelsea looked perplexed by Sharon's too optimistic demeanor, and Adam stated that he was beginning to question whether sending Connor to the institution had been the right decision. Adam stated that Connor had already experienced numerous setbacks. Sharon told Adam that setbacks were to be expected and that it was normal for parents to have concerns. Chelsea only wanted to celebrate their good news. Sharon reaffirmed that there will be ups and downs, but the end outcome would satisfy them. Chelsea mentioned that Connor wanted to meet them, but Adam was doubtful and did not want to be disappointed again. After Sharon went away, Chelsea admitted that she too worried Connor turning them away again, but she was going to preserve the faith. They decided to have a video conversation with Connor from Adam's house but they stopped to say farewell to Sharon first. Chelsea thanked Sharon for her assistance. Sharon stated that individuals needed to support one another in order to overcome mental health challenges. When Adam and Chelsea arrived at his house, Connor announced some huge news via video chat. He had eaten soup, a cuisine he had previously avoided. Connor was concerned that something was wrong with it, but he quickly got over it. He was exceedingly pleased of himself, and so were his parents. Connor even invited them to visit. When the call ended, Adam and Chelsea felt hopeful for the first time in months. Chelsea was confident that Connor would continue to make progress. Adam contacted Nick and requested the use of the Newman plane, just as Victor texted Adam, stating that he needed to meet Adam immediately. Back at Crimson Lights, Nick overheard Sharon speaking on the phone in an irritated tone of voice. He approached her after she had hung up and inquired what was wrong. Sharon said that weariness had made her irritable. She hadn't slept well since taking a new bipolar medication. Sharon assured Nick that she would be okay because she, like his mother, had survived. The best of the best. Discover which program had the worst whisperer. The best mystery the best eating crow, the best welcome back, and much more. What were your thoughts? Did we get it right or did we overlook something you adored? Please let us know in the comments section below. We also gave honorable mention to the YNR social media team for Nick's Joshua Morrow, who is celebrating his 30th anniversary, Ares. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.